Let's start by using the Mozart system as a calculator. This will let us introduce how Oz works and introduce gradually into how declarative programming does. So here on the right, you see the Oz window. This is in fact the Emacs text editor uh, on uh, Macintosh, it's called Aquamax. And in this editor, we have two panes. In the first pane, we can type bits of uh, Oz code and we can then feed them and execute them. So for example, the simplest way is to use uh, Mozart as a calculator. So let me type in a calculation. Browse 1,234 times 5,678. Uh, and I, there's different ways I can feed this. So I select and then I do feed the region that I've selected and it will execute this and it will open a component of Mozart called the browser which lets you display results. So here we have the result 7,006,652. So this is the basic way. You enter a statement into the uh, OS window, you feed it, and it's executed. So let's go a little bit farther. We can give names to these calculation results. For example, x, let me call x uh, this name and bind it to the result of the calculation. So I feed the region again. And then if I do browse of x, it will display the value like before. Uh, you can see the value appearing again. And I can do, once the x exists, I can do things with it like browse x times x. And then I get another result. Okay, so that's uh, one way of, of using the Mozart system. We can enter expressions as argument to the browse. So the browse technically is a one argument procedure. Procedures have braces surrounding them, followed by the name of the procedure and then an expression whose value is calculated and it's displayed in the browser. So the X here, what is this X? So let's try to be very precise. This X here is a single character. It's a capital letter X. And somehow the value here, 7 million, is attached to this capital letter X. Okay, so how does it work? Well, let me explain because this is an important uh, uh, insight into how computing works and programming works. So the X, the character that you see, the capital letter X, is called an identifier. And this character, it's not this character that's storing things, but there is a part of the computer's memory which is used to store the value. So somehow this character X corresponds to this slot in memory. Okay, So this slot in memory is what we will call a variable okay, or a variable in memory. And so the big X corresponds to the slot, the variable in memory. Okay, So the instruction declare here with the X behind it does two things. So first of all, it creates, allocates a new variable in memory. And second, it makes that it makes uh, the correspondence between the identifier X and the variable in memory. Okay. So the variable in memory, we don't actually see it. Okay. It's sitting inside the computer's memory. We can refer to it through the capital letter X. So but during this course, I would like to give you more information and talk about what's going on inside the computer's memory. So what I'm going to do is give that variable in memory a name. Okay, now this name is not stored in the machine. It's not stored anywhere. It's conceptual. It's technically part of the semantics, part of our understanding of how programs work. So let me call that variable corresponding to the capital letter X. Let me call it little x. I will usually use small letters uh, or italic letters, small ones, to name the variables in memory. This little x is not at all stored in the program. The program doesn't know anything about that. The program only knows that there's a slot in memory and that the big x somehow corresponds to this slot in the implementation. But in order to let us think about how the program works, let's call the little variable in memory little x. Okay, so this correspondence between an identifier is what the programmer sees, a textual 
sequence of characters, uh, here it's an X, and the variable in memory, uh, this correspondence is an important concept, and this correspondence is called an environment. Uh, sometimes it's called a frame, environment frame, but we'll just call it an environment. Okay, so this environment is actually a kind of a function. So an environment E, capital E, takes one argument, which is the identifier, and returns the variable in memory. Now, this function does not actually exist in the machine as such. The machine does what the machine does corresponds to this. It's something that helps us think about how the program works. So we have an environment. At every point in the program's execution, we have an environment. And this environment takes an argument, which is an identifier, and it returns a variable in memory.